All right. Hey, everyone. My name is... <laughs> My name is Piotr Jordanov, and uh, I'm the co-founder and CTO of BetBytech, the website you're just seeing. I'm not just making publicity for this, but I want to show you actually how we built the website and a problem we faced when we were developing it and the solution we used. And the real consequence of this is that BetBytech currently is a single-page app. Who of you knows what single-page app means? All right. So let me show you what a single-page app is. As you saw, I just loaded the page, right? So I go over the map, I click on specific marker, and, <laughs> and then I go to, to this page, all right, uh, back to map, then I can, I don't know, click another marker, view this thing, um, back to map. Okay, so I don't know if you noticed something, the page was never reloaded. Okay, there was never like the page going back again, fetching all the data and everything. What really happened is that the map was at first hidden for you to show you the description and then back and forth multiple times. The whole point is that assume that every time the user has to reload the page, then every time he has to reload Google Maps, which is already heavy because it's images, and every time he has to reload all the data that we, I'm displaying for him on the page. So a single page app is really somewhere where you're playing with the DOM. You're just hiding elements and showing elements. Now, uh, in order to do this, uh, the technology being used on the client is Backbone, okay? It's a client MVC. Backbone is not the only one. As a matter of fact, there's maybe, I don't know, 15 to 20 of them. If you really want to know how many there are, just go to todomvc.com. You'll see all the possible implementations. Knockout is one of those implementations, as Ahmad just described, okay? So why Backbone? Why not something else? I think that at the end of the day, it's really a personal choice. Uh, when I picked Backbone, it is because... I did not want to have the magic that Knockout would give me. I don't want to have the magic that Ember, which I tried, give me. I want to really have control and have the decision on my side. I want to choose what template engines I'm going to use. I want to choose the way I'm going to be having events and everything. Because when you really go into this code, if you really see this code base, you realize that 80% of the code is really on the client. So this is why I, w I want to have control. Um, so the client is done in Backbone, and the server is done in something called Node.js. How many of you know about Node.js? OK. So you know about PHP, right? <laughs> you know about maybe Rails, right? Who knows about Rails? <laughs> OK. So Node.js, really, what it is, it is JavaScript, Java JavaScript on the server. OK? So when I'm writing my server, I'm not writing PHP. I'm not writing Python or Ruby. I'm writing JavaScript. The same JavaScript you, every one of you, use when you're building a website to have you know, the jQuery stuff, fancy stuff happening. So uh, this is a, an interesting argument of using Node at first because you learn the language once, especially if you're new, which was the case when I picked Node. You just learn JavaScript, and here we go. You know how to write servers. You know how to write the client. And if we go a little bit more experimental, you realize that you can even build desktop apps using, I don't know, uh, the JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, or you can even build mobile apps, to some extent native mobile apps, using stuff like uh, Sancha Labs or uh, PhoneGap. All right. um, so this is really maybe, uh, I won't say it's the strongest argument of using Node, but there's another argument of using Node. So now the client is only fetching data and fetching templates from the server once. And then the user can spend 30 minutes on your website, playing with your website, and he'll never, almost never, make a request to the server. As a matter of fact, the simple requests the client does here are just to fetch description and phone. And I can even go as far as giving them the first time for the user. So what's happening is that you have your databases, whatever, it can be SQL, it can be no SQL, whatever it is. You have your client on the other side, and you have something in between, which you all call server, which you all would use PHP to do this. Okay, So the question is, there's no longer any computation really happening on the this, on this, on this server, to some extent, of course. You're no longer rendering templates on the server. You're rendering them on the client. And what your server really is now, it's a simple uh, you know, a messenger who the client tells him, I want this data. He goes, sends a request to, this, to the database, fetches this data, and sends it to the client. Okay? So you need to have, with this type of new application, you need to have something that is really, really, really good at non-blocking, that is really, really good at just getting a request, sending it to someone, and then making I.O., basically. Now, you know JavaScript, right? And you know that JavaScript is, has this thing that maybe programmers hate called callbacks. Okay? And then you might be writing spaghetti code because of the callbacks, right? 
who has written spaghetti code before? Yeah, right, exactly. Um, but funny enough, this is what is really, really interesting in Node, because now when, you, when I make a request to my database, I don't block. I don't spawn a new thread. As a matter of fact, Node is one thread. No matter how many requests you give me, I'm just having one thread. It might sound crazy, but this is where it's good at, because I get a request, I send this request to database, and then I tell it, you know what, when you finish just, this is your callback. And I give for this callback, and this callback is the one that's gonna fetch this data, maybe do some processing for it, and send it to the client. And what's even more interesting, that if you are using a NoSQL store like Mongo or Redis or, I don't know, Cassandra, there's a lot of them out there, okay? Most of these guys work around JSON, because all that they have is a JSON document, or be JSON document, or whatever. So, JavaScript is also really good at processing strings, and in particular, JSON strings. So not only do you have something that gives you a very non-blocking uh, system, but you also have someone who loves to play with JSON. And as a matter of fact, this is what we have on our server. We have a Mongo stored at for documents. Now, of course, going for Mongo or SQL is not really because, hey, we're going to be using JSON. There's always a lot of consideration depending on when you're building database. But Assuming the context and the situation of our, of our application, it was extremely useful and extremely practical. The other very interesting aspect is that I honestly was learning web almost, like eight months ago I started learning web. So for me learning you know, JavaScript, figuring out how jQuery works, and at the same time learning I don't know, Python or Rails or PHP, it's like really learning this thing twice. But what happened with me is that whenever I learn something of, I don't know, uh, let's say array manipulation, in a fancy way on, on, on nodes, I could reuse the same code and the same thing I learned into Backbone and back and forth. And it happened multiple times. Not only that, but the code you write once in Backbone, you can reuse it on the server. Very simple, stupid example. You want to do some, um, I don't know, uh, numerical uh, analysis on some numbers, okay? And you have this very fancy library that you are using on JavaScript. Guess what? You can take this library and put it in nodes. As a matter of fact, it is already there if you don't know. It's on GitHub somewhere or on NPM, whatever. It's already there. So you wrote, I, I don't know, you wrote this code that would do some uh, data processing. You have it on your client. But then you figure out that for security reason, it should be on the server. You don't have to learn how to do it again. You don't have to figure out what gem or what other thing to use. You just copy and paste. So um, I talk a lot of stuff. Let me try and just sum this up for you because this is really beating edge tech, and if you don't know what's happening, it, you'll really get lost. So the problem we're trying to solve is that we want to have the user experience as easy and as simple as possible. In order to do that, okay, we want to send for the client everything the first time he really gets into the web page. Of course, this has an impact on the first load time, but it can be optimized, gzipped, whatever. Okay, read this, as Rakan said. <laughs> um, uh, but what you want to have is, uh, so you want to have this experience to be fast, and MVC is the solution. And you also want to have your development time reduced. You don't want to be spending three months writing something, you want to be spending two months or one month. Not only that, you want to have that your new recruits that get in your system, there's to some extent a high chance they already know JS, because, I mean, if you work PHP, you have JavaScript and jQuery, so they already know the language. So this is plus, and the second plus is that Node is really easy to pick up. I mean, there's no big framework on top of Node like Rails, so it's good and bad at the same time. But what happens is that not only have you reduced your development time of the application itself, but you also reduce the time for you to recruit new people on board if you're thinking you know, from a business perspective. Um, and overall, you made your user a little bit more happy. Um, so uh, I think this is it. Uh, I, I don't know how much I condense into your head stuff right now. You might be lost, but uh, if you have any question, do ask me after this. And well, thank you very much. <laughs>